Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Keith Thompson, and I'd like to really quickly respond to a question that was emailed to me from a fellow subscriber. Uh, his question is, how do I respond to my pastor that rebuked me very brashly, very hard? Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and share a story with you before I go ahead and directly answer the question. Uh, it's an experience that I had that is similar to how, uh, what this young man is going through. Back in 2012, uh, I was I was saved, and I started my YouTube channel, and I can't remember the exact dates within the year, but I had, by this time, built up a following of maybe two or 300 followers. And uh, one, of the one of the first subscribers that I actually had a relationship with was a young man that went to Grace Community Church in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, his pastor was Tim Conway. And he was, uh, he had been saved longer than I had and I had a lot of questions. So I was asking him a lot of questions. And one day he just said, you know what, why don't you just talk directly to my pastor? He knows much more than I do. He's been a great help to me. So he shared Tim Conway's email with me. And I started emailing Tim Conway and we would email back and forth. Um, for literally a total of three and a half years, I remember um, looking back saying, we've been talking this long. But uh, if, if I had any questions, I would email him and ask him and he would respond. Um, he wouldn't respond to everything, but I would uh, send my condolences when Bob Jennings and Michael Marvel passed away and just little things like that. And uh, I remember I had a friend at my job at the time who was a uh, Church of Christ pastor. He was lost um, and his gospel relied basically on water baptism. I mean, he honestly believed that the thief on the cross wasn't saved because he wasn't baptized. And so one day I had, you know, garnered up enough courage to confront him on this issue. And I shared the gospel and, and, he, and we went back and forth. And he said, you know what, one day, he finally came to the point where he said, why don't you just share the gospel with me since you don't think I know it. And I, you know, mustered up enough insight that I had at the time to, and, and at this time I had been experiencing, um, what it was to be a Calvinist. And so I had what Paul Washer would say, puffed myself up on a lot of uh, biblical terminology that has no place um, in regards to evangelism. And so I was using all this, uh, you know, reformed Calvinistic terminology. It was very confusing. I think I eventually got to my point, but I basically, you know, broke it down that way. Uh, and I, I thought I was doing something. I really thought I was doing something. I was puffed up. I was arrogant. <clears throat> and so I shared it with my friend and he kind of was like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Really don't know what all this, uh, <clears throat> what these words mean, but okay. So I thought I had did something. And so I forwarded the conversation, the interaction I had with my friend to uh, Tim Conway. Like, yep, yeah, yo, yo, pastor, look what I, you know, look what I just did. This is, you know, I shared the gospel and this and that. And about 30 minutes later, I got a response. He responded and he, and I'm expecting him to be like, oh, good job, brother. Good job. Man, he ripped my head off, man. He ripped my head off. <laughs> that was my first humbling experience uh, that I had in regards to Christianity. Pastor Tim Conway tore me to pieces. And he did it in a, in a, in a very in a respectful way, but it was a way where it was like it made you feel uncomfortable because I'm expecting him to, you know, kind of like agree with me. I'm expecting him to agree with me. And he, and I can't remember exactly what he said. He was right. He was right. I was wrong. I can't remember exactly what he said, but the way he did it in his tone, he was, he was angry. He was mad. Uh, he was passionate about this. This is what he does for a living. He was passionate about it. And, uh, he corrected me. He corrected me and I'm thankful for that, but it was humbling. It was a humbling experience. And I didn't respond to him like, man, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have came at me like that. You should have uh, been more respectful. You should have you know, watch your tone. No, I said, brother, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, I made a mistake. Thank you for correcting me. Um, and I was very respectful. Uh, I, I realized that he was an elder brother. He knew much more than me. Um, I, 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 and I knew that anything other than humbling myself in this experience would be a bad decision. So when we, when we have these situations where we have an elder brother who may be a pastor rebuke you, the first thing you want to, think about is, is he right? Okay. Is he right? Um, but even if he isn't right, <clears throat> there always has to be, <clears throat> excuse me, there always has to be a level of respect. Okay. <clears throat> for a leader. All right. We should never, you know, look to fight or to argue or to, <clears throat> because in a lot of cases, most time we're probably wrong. Most likely we're wrong. 
So uh, the first response is to humble yourself, to, to realize that this man knows more than you do, and to take what he said and to take it home and to really meditate on it and, and go into the scriptures and see is what he said right. And if it's right, you submit to it. But if it's wrong, you may want to approach him and you can, you know, respectfully enter a discussion on that topic, but always do it respectfully. Okay, never puffed up. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to share that experience with Tim Conway and uh, it was a very humbling experience. Uh, looking back, he may he may even say, you know, I would have handled it different. Maybe, I, and, you know, Tim Conway's not perfect. Okay, he's not perfect. And I'm not saying that the way what he said to me was wrong. I'm saying that he may look back at it and say, maybe I was too hard. He might say that. He might say that. Okay. Um, but there's nothing wrong with hard rebukes. Okay. If, if the rebuke is correct, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think, you know, we've become too weak in this society where, you know, we don't know how to take correction. And uh, so I just wanted to share that, uh, that, that story with you guys. And I hope that answered your question. Um, thank you for listening.